When you run a hierarchical multiple regression using SPSS, you get several tables of output. The first table provides descriptive statistics for each variable in the regression. So on average, people paid $5.92 for the album, their weekly disposable income was $108.09, they estimated that others would pay around $4.53 for the album, and they already owned between four and five previous albums. The second table is a correlation matrix. In the first column, we can see that all three predictors correlate substantially and significantly with the criterion. They also correlate to some extent with each other. The third table is called variables entered and removed. This table provides a summary of the variables in the regression. We can see here that there were two predictors entered into the regression on block one, and SPSS refers to this two predictor model as model one throughout the output. On block two, a third variable was entered. In total, then, there are three predictors in model two, the two which were entered on block one, plus the third which was entered on block two. Now, looking at the top row of the model summary table, we can see that in combination, weekly disposable income and price others would pay accounted for 63.7% of the variance in price paid for the album. Scrolling down to the first part of the ANOVA table, the part which is labelled Model 1, we can see that this 63.7% is a significant proportion of variance. In combination, the two Block 1 predictors, which were disposable income and price others would pay, have predictive utility. Now looking back up at the model summary table, we can see that the three predictors in combination can account for 67.9% of the variance in price paid for the album. This three predictor model also has predictive utility. The difference between R squared for the two predictor model and R squared for the three predictor model is 0.042. To determine whether this proportion of incremental variance is statistically significant, we need to refer to the F-change test. And in this case, it is. So far we've learnt that weekly disposable income and price others would pay can, in combination, account for 63.7% of the variance in price paid for the album when entered on block one of the hierarchical regression. When the number of albums already owned was entered on block two, it accounted for an additional 4.2% of the variance in price paid. This proportion of incremental variance was statistically significant. The full three predictor model was able to explain 67.9% of the variance in price paid. And again, this is a statistically significant amount. Refer to the section on standard multiple regression in StatHand for information about adjusted R-squared and the standard error of estimate. So next we'll scroll down to the coefficients table which tells us about the role that each predictor plays in the regression. Generally speaking, we would only interpret the coefficients for the final model, in this case, model two. The partial unstandardized regression coefficient or B for disposable income is 0.021. For each unit or dollar increase in weekly disposable income, we would predict a corresponding 0.021 or 2.1 cent increase in the price a customer is willing to pay for the album. This is after controlling for or holding constant the other two predictors in the model. The corresponding t-test tells us that this regression coefficient departs significantly from zero. So in other words, it's a significant predictor. It has predictive utility. The other two partial unstandardized regression coefficients can be interpreted in the same way and they are also statistically significant. The confidence intervals around each of these partial regression coefficients are reported to the right of the significance tests. Now, in addition to the unstandardized coefficients, there's also a set of standardized coefficients called beta. These indicate the standard deviation change in the criterion associated with a one standard deviation change in the relevant predictor whilst controlling for any other predictors in the model. Now also in the coefficients table, if we scroll to the right, we have a set of correlations. The zero order correlations are the same as those reported in the correlation matrix at the top of the page. The part correlations can be squared 
to provide squared semi-partial correlations. A squared semi-partial correlation indicates the amount of unique variance in the criterion that can be accounted for by a predictor. If we square 0.325, which is the part correlation for disposable income in Model 2, we get 0.106. So in other words, disposable income can uniquely account for about 10.6% of the variance in prices paid for the album. And we already know that this is a statistically significant amount because we've already looked at the corresponding t-test. Now on the far right of the coefficients table, we have a set of collinearity statistics. These are used to assess the absence of multicollinearity assumption, which underpins multiple regression. And their interpretation is described in StatHand. In StatHand, you'll also find information about detecting outliers using the information which is provided in the residual statistics table. For now, though, we'll skip past this table. And finally, at the bottom of the output, there are three charts that can be used to assess the assumptions of normality, linearity, and homoscedasticity of residuals. Again, the interpretation of these is described in StatHand. Now, this is how you might summarize the results of these analyses. So on block one of a hierarchical multiple regression, weekly disposable income and the estimated prices that others would pay accounted for a significant 63.7% of the variance in the prices customers paid for the album. When the number of albums the customer already owned was entered on block two, it accounted for an additional and significant 4.2% of the variance in prices paid. In total, the three predictors accounted for a significant 67.9% of the variance in prices paid. As illustrated in Table 1, all three predictors accounted for a significant proportion of unique criterion variance in the final regression model. Now in a full write-up, you would also need to include the results of your assumption tests, and these are described in StatHand.